just has to make one more lap around here to take home this victory. A well-deserved victory and a very, very popular victory for me, too. This short course racing venue, look at him waving to the crowd as Evan Evans is working his way around this track for the last time. And I, I'll tell you what, I think you're looking at the future Class 13 champion. Here comes the checker flag, so Evan Evans again wins in Class 13 action. But, uh, you know, that's just my motto. If that truck is going to run and it's a healthy truck underneath me, even after a big major crash like that, I'm going to drive it. and Never give up. My dad's always taught me, drive it until the wheels fall off of it. And that's what I did. Win. It's so good, like I said, to finally get the chance to talk to you. You, uh, while you're not racing anymore, I can promise you this, and you'll find out this weekend, that you are very much on the minds of the whole community, all these fans. How much are you thinking about short course off-road nowadays? A lot. It, it's like asking me not to breathe. <laughs> it, uh, it's what I love. It's what I like to do, and it's what I made my career and, and watched my father my whole life growing up, and so it's installed into me. I miss it a lot. How special is it to be back, and at Bark River no less, 10 wins here on top of other very historical moments that you made happen right here. How special is it to be back in Bark River, Michigan? It's always special to come to Bark River. I, actually, as I drive in, I always say, Bark River! That's just one of my things I do. I did it today driving in. Uh, Bark River's always been a special place to me. I've, Like you said, I've got a lot of wins here, but on top of that, I have the best fans here. I have spent a lot of time with my fans because I've won and my autograph lines so long and I've gotten to know all my fans. So I've missed them so much. Uh, to come here is just wonderful to see the place. They've really expanded. They've made the track a little wider, a little faster, a little bigger. I'm kind of jealous that I don't get to be on it. Never give up. That has carried you through many hardships, but yeah. that mentality, where did that exactly begin? I would have to imagine that mentality began early on. Well, you know, when I was younger, my dad used to take me to work and he would take me by this one job site and every day I'd see, he would explain to me, there's this great big house and they're cutting, cutting it apart and they're gonna jack it up and they're gonna move it to a different location. And I was maybe six, seven years old and I just thought, they're not going to cut a house, jack it up, and move it on a truck and put it somewhere else. And sure enough, my dad every day explained what they were doing. About a month later, he told, took me by this other job site, and there's this great big, beautiful two-story house all put back together, nice landscaping, new driveway, and it was just so beautiful. I thought, that's amazing that you can do that. And my dad told me, if you want to do something bad enough and you work hard for it, you can accomplish anything. And so that's kind of always stuck with me. That, uh, that, yeah, I, it, no matter what happens in life, if you want to do something bad enough, you can do it. And so uh, when I got hurt, I decided that my racing is not going to be over because when I came to, I still had my hands. I still recognized my family. I thought, well, I'm going to go for it. I'm going to keep racing. Uh, my dad at the time was nervous. He didn't know if internally that was going to hurt me. Nobody in my condition had ever put themselves through this kind of abuse racing. So he was nervous for me. And uh, you know, I, I, what he installed into me, never give up. If you want something bad enough and you can work hard for it, you can accomplish it. That started kicking in. Whether he wanted me out there or not, I still had the fire inside me and I wanted it. So we, that's where we, rec uh, we uh, exercise that never give upness. So you believed in it the whole time, but all that you accomplished despite getting injured and despite any setbacks along the way, I would have to assume that really reaffirmed it with you. It, Never give up. It did. You know, even even my dad being nervous for my health after my accident, uh, he'd already installed that into me. If you want it bad enough and you work hard for it and never give up, you can accomplish anything. And so I thought, well, you know, sorry, dad, but we're going to have to exercise what you installed into me. And we did. You've you've accomplished so much and you've given back so much and not just inspiring people but you've played a big role in accessibility at racetracks and Crandon and Bark River being just a couple of them so tell me about your involvement with that. Well that is true it, my first rookie year out there I just finished my race and I did well and I wanted to go watch my father race and so I went out and they only had a grass hill at the time they didn't have bleachers or anything at Crandon yet and uh, I was so excited to watch my dad. So the race started, there was thunder in the valley coming down that hit the first corner and everybody stood up. 
to see what was going on, and I, and I got to watch the guy's T-shirt in front of me. The only good thing about that is, is a Walker Evans T-shirt that was in front of me. <laughs> My dad ended up winning the race. I was so upset that I didn't get to see the race that I immediately went to some of my sponsors, which was Chevrolet and the GM Mobility Program, which the GM Mobility Program is, uh, GM will reimburse you up to $1,000 if you buy a new vehicle and uh, get assessed for whatever disability you are. They will help you get the adaptive equipment in that vehicle. And so uh, I went to Chevrolet and they were happy to be involved and help me with that too.